In this video, we're going to go over episode 6 of the Bootcamp Basics for the Roland MC707. Make sure to watch the previous episodes first since these are built up from the previous ones. Let's start off, press Project, choose Setting. Let's turn the project level all the way up to 127, press Exit. If we press up from the top row here, it'll select the entire track. If we're not in the top track, you can just press Shift and arrow up and it'll select the track. I can also arrow right or left and it'll switch and it'll still be selecting that track. So here we see two tracks already made up from a new project. Let's delete them. So turn C4 knob to delete, push down. Delete track, are you sure? Okay. Now let's arrow over to two, delete. Okay. Now we have completely blank project. Now let's arrow over and up to the first clip. So we're gonna press select one for track one. Now we see menu, let's change it to looper. Looper tracks are usually best used for something you wanted to record that's synchronized to the clock. In this video, we're gonna explore what we can do with unsynchronized sounds. Next, let's press input. Now, let's turn that value knob all the way up. Let's go all the way up to 255. So I have my phone wired in to the line in. And if I press play here, it's just a YouTube stream. So I have an old live stream playing here. Let's just pause it. In looper tracks, our entire project limit is around one minute. So we have to be careful not to overload the memory and we're just gonna work within that. Instead of fighting that limitation, let's just work within it and see what we can do. So let's press shift reverb, press arrow up and change that to warm hall. Let's turn up the time and the level, max it out. Now let's press shift multi. We see multi mode filter right now. I'm just gonna hold down shift and turn C4. Next we're at delay. Let's turn to the right until we see time control delay. This is the feedback for the delay and this is the time. So we're just gonna turn up the feedback a little here. Let's turn the tempo to 128. Press tempo to disable. Now let's press shift input. Now we can see all the settings for the input. The first one's for a microphone line. It's just a gain. We're not gonna use that because it's just set to the line in. External and we can change stereo mono. Let's leave it on mono because that's all I'm running through right now. Record source is what we're gonna record from. So currently it's set to external, so the external line in. We can do PC, any of the tracks, one through eight, or mix out. Mix out's pretty much when we record from that, it's kind of like resampling the entire audio signal that we hear. So let's turn it back to external. Now record measure is how long, how many measures we're gonna record into here. I can actually change it from down here. The measure buttons can switch between one through eight measures. Now let's press exit and we're on this clip here. So press record, just play the track here. And we're just gonna record right in. You can see it just recorded that loop. Now I'm gonna stop it. Notice I had the volume off. So that's because, let's turn down feedback. That's because I didn't want to play right over that phone audio so I can hear what's going on. So let's turn it up now. So we can hear it's not exactly synchronized and it sounds crazy. So that's exactly what I wanted to work with. So I can change the top knob here. That changes the pitch, it's like chromatic. You can also see, it's actually, we can press the key to change that. Next down here, we have reverse, so it's a switch off or on. So you can hear it in reverse, or turn it back. Now down here, just reverb send. So if I crank it, it's gonna sound all ambient. Reverse it. Turn down the reverb. Turn off reverse. Go down an octave. And slide it this way. So that's just the default settings for it. So if I press shift and sound in that clip, we can choose settings, press enter. Now we can see here, we can change the level, the pitch stretch type. So type two is for rhythmic. So let's just press play. Let's change that pitch. So that's for rhythm. Let's just change that over to type one. It's supposed to be for more pitch or melodic purposes. So that's type one and type two. Switch type one. So now we have an next stretch window. So if I change that, it's gonna change kind of the grittiness of what we hear. Let's 
change it. So you can hear the difference in the stretch window when it's all the way up. It's at one, we're gonna bring it higher. Let's bring it down a little. So since the time stretch on the MC707 is going to be granular no matter what we do, we can use that setting as an experimental tool instead of expecting it to be smooth. We can also enable and disable reverse from this screen. So let's press exit. Now we're going to go over to MFX. I'm going to press enter. Now what I'm going to do is choose super filter. Now it says filter type. Let's change that to LPF, which is low pass filter. That cuts down on the high end. Let's turn the decibels to negative 12. Now I'm gonna press knob assign. So now I'm gonna change this because I can control the pitch from here. Let's turn to super filter, filter cutoff. So now the top knob, if I press play, we can change that. Reverse it. So let's turn it off. Now let's change C2 to resonance. So resonance will exaggerate that cutoff. So let's turn it up. Turn it up even more. If you want to change the pitch smoothly, there's pitch shift. So if I press play, I can change that pitch very smoothly. You can turn it up really high and turn down that cutoff so it's not too harsh. Turn down resonance. Turn it lower. Or we can turn it to pitch fine and then I can do like little note bends. Make it warbly sounding. You can hold down select and turn up reverb. Let's just crank it. Turn up the delay sound. Let's actually turn that. We can change that to reverse. bring the tempo right back up to 128. If we try to copy and paste the track, it's not going to save the settings that we set. So note that each clip is going to have its own settings, including the knob assign. So if I press shift and record, we're in a different sampling recorder screen. We can see the trigger is set to enter. That means if I press enter, it'll start recording and then you press it again to stop. I see trigger clock, or we can choose a decibel threshold. For it to start recording. Let's just leave it on enter and it's set to external. Again we can change the record source to external, PC, tracks 1 through 8, or mix out. So let's leave it on external again. I'm going to press play, and then enter. Now it's just recording that. When I'm done press enter again and we can stop. So from here we can't really see anything it's just some lines. If I press arrow up we can scale vertically so we can see the actual waveform. What I can do too is just change normalize here to a negative one decibels. If I push down, that's going to take the highest peak and it's going to scale the entire volume to the normalized setting that I have. So now we can see the wave a lot clearer. We can also zoom in so we can see all the different parts of the wave. 
want to make sure we got at least one or two seconds of audio on here. So now if I press preview, it sounds kind of loud. So I can tone it down a little. Let's make it negative 10, push down, function. Okay, that's a little better. Now left and right arrow changes. You can see the arrow on the screen here. Now we're gonna go over that section in a later video. I can change the start here and turning it. You can also preview it. Or I can hold it down if I wanna move it in really close. You can see the change. Now if I hold down shift and turn, it's just gonna be a big step here. Same here at the end, we can do the same controls. Shift, even when you're zoomed in and hold down shift and turn, that'll still move it a little quicker. So I'm just gonna reset it, there we go. Fun function enter is gonna export the wave file. You definitely don't wanna miss that step if you wanna use the wave file later. So now I'm gonna press exit, I'm gonna scroll down to the next clip. Now if I just wanna load in what I just made, just press sound, go down to wave file, press enter, and we're gonna go to export, we're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom, and that's the file. Press enter. Now it just imported that right in. So it scales in that length into the tempo and one measure. So if I press play here, you can hear it scaled. I can turn it down a little. Now if you press knob assign for something we load in, we have different controls automatically. So you have fine pitch, we have reverse, don't really hear much because it's kind of atmospheric. And then we have reverb send. So I'm gonna press exit, shift sound. We're gonna go to MFX on this one. Now I'm gonna turn this. Now let's turn it over to lo-fi compress. Just hold shift and turn it till it gets to there. And then turn to the left two times. Now we're at the DJ effects looper. So now I'm gonna press knob assign. On the top knob, we're gonna change to DJ effects length. We're gonna change the middle knob to loop switch. The bottom knob, we're gonna turn to speed. So the top one changes the length of the looper itself. And we can turn it on by turning the switch. So it locks into the time that we had set on this knob. Now I can turn the knob and change that. I can turn it back off and then it goes straight back to the audio. Now this, if it's all the way to the right, it's gonna play forward. If it goes to the middle, it's just gonna be blank, nothing. If we go into the minus, now we're gonna go into the reverse. You can't really hear it, it sounds warbly. So we turn the length to the left, and I can hear it start to go in reverse. So I can turn it to the right, or you just change the pitch to anything we want. So let's exit. Now what I'm gonna do is go to the top. Here we're just gonna choose looper for each of the tracks. So just pressing select and enter because I already had looper set. Now, with all the volume down, I can just skip around on this video. So I'm gonna just choose a random spot here, press record, and then press play. Let's record. You can hear it clicking. Okay, so I just record that in. Press another select. Let's move it somewhere else. Press record. Now see it waits, and then it records. Let's go somewhere else. Go to the next track, press record. Now we're kind of just randomly picking things here. Choose here, record. Not really worrying about timing or anything. We're just recording stuff in. Now we're gonna go here. Let's bring this all the way, bring it back here. Let's just record. Switch it somewhere else and do the last one. Press record, record that in. Okay, so the, all that has been recorded in. We can't hear it now because all the volumes are down. Now I really like those DJ looper effects that I have on here. So I'm gonna do is select that first clip, choose copy. Now I'm gonna go over to the right, press paste. 
a fax knob, not sampler at all, just a fax knob. So now I'm pasting in that DJ effects looper setting to all of the tracks. Just takes a couple of seconds. But once it's in there, it's there. Now what I want to do is let's let's delete this clip. So it's highlighted, made sure it's that clip, and choose delete. Are you sure? Okay. So since we have really low memory to work with, it didn't remove that from the memory. So we can remove it by pressing shift, knob assign, and then scrolling over to looper optimize. Press enter. Now it'll say fragment usage. Let's turn it to okay. And now it's just gonna delete that wave. So it just removed that from the memory. Just changing the speed here. Turn off the loop switch. Turn it up. Turn up the feedback over here. Turn it down. Now let's turn up the next one. Let's change the pitch. Looper, change the time. Turn off the looper. It's going to reverse. Turn the time down. Turn up feedback. Turn down the track. Let's check this one. Okay, this one turned out pretty cool. Let's change the pitch. Turn on the looper. And change the pitch now. Turn off the looper. So I'll leave it like that. Let's go to the next one. So this has drums. So we can hear this. It's uh, going to reverse. You can hear that clearly. Let's turn down the feedback here. Let's bring it back to the positive. Feedback here. Let's go to the next one. Let's hold down select, turn up delay. Reverse. Slower. Turn up the 
feedback. Let's turn down the reverb. Turn it off the loop. Let's go into the shift sound set. Let's change the stretch window. Change the type. Check out the last track. I'm going to copy the knobs from clip one. We're just going to paste all those in. Just effects knob. Now left the last one blank because we're going to use that for resampling. So shift input. Now let's turn this to stereo. Let's turn this all the way over to mix out. Let's change the rec measure to eight. Let's just turn this up. Turn up the pitch. So whatever knobs we have set here, unless we turn motion, we can also adjust motion. So shift and a step. Now we can see the same thing as before. So this right here, we can turn it and turn the knob, change that filter, or just turn it here. Turn, turn. So now we can hear what we just programmed in. If I hold on and turn those knobs, it just erases that and it just plays normal. So I can, as it's playing, hold down record, change a knob, and it'll play it back, reset it, on, turn. Now it's going to play at that pitch that I'm at, so let's bring it up. Let's go to the next one. Turn up the pitch. Turn on the looper. Just leave it like that. Just want to turn up the pitch.
So what I want to do is record eight measures of these into this. So it's already set up. So all I have to do is press record. And then once these finish, it's just going to start recording into there. So let's just press record and see what happens. So now if I turn this up, we can hear what it sounds like. So right now it's at a low pitch. Let's turn it up. Let's press shift sound, edit, if I arrow over, I can change the length scale. Let's turn it down. Turn up the scale. You can choose measure, it says eight. So right now I think what I have to do is re-change. So I have to change all these settings again. So reset them. So I'm gonna press shift sound MFX. Now let's turn this over. A DJ FX looper, knob assign, one. We're gonna change that to length. Then it's gonna be loop switch. And then speed. So now we can really play around with it. Turn up the reverb send. Let's go back in, choose edit. Let's normalize that up a little. I'm gonna stop this, normalize the negative two. So now let's maximize that. So let's press play. That's a lot louder, so you can hear it better. So we have two rows here. I'm going to press shift to the right. I'm going to choose delete. Just deleted all of those clips. So they're all gone now. So now I can just start over. So here's some more examples I put in. Now I set the multi to guitar amp sim. So listen to it without the multi effects on. So it's all just looping. Let's turn on the guitar MSM. And change the values here. That's what it sounds like, so turn it back on.
tempo, un po' festa. Back in here, we're going to go back to time control delay, turn things up, I'm going to turn up the feedback, bring up the time. So now it's without the guitar effect. And switch back to the first row, clip, press here. Let's turn up the time, turn up the feedback. Turn up reverb. Since these are new clips, I have to turn them back up 